We're going to talk about alternating current circuits. These are circuits that look like they have a voltage source and sources of resistance to current flowing through the circuit, but the current alternates in direction back and forth. In a direct current circuit, the one that we've talked about for most of this course, we try to uh, supply a voltage source like a battery that keeps the current moving in one constant direction. That's why it's called direct current. And if you were to plot the voltage in a direct current so source over time, it would just be a flat line because the voltage coming out of the battery is a, is a constant number. In an alternating current, however, uh, then the, the voltage source is alternating back and forth in terms of its direction. And as a result, the current alternates back and forth because uh, it's trying to follow the voltage. So if you were to plot the voltage versus time coming out of uh, not exactly a battery, but a voltage source that supplies a voltage to an alternating current, it would look something like this. It would look like a sinusoid, and literally the voltage as a function of time would be expressed as a sine of some uh, constant times time. And the constant is just there to make the thing that you put stick into the sinusoid function uh, have units of radians, but it's, it gets uh, something like a name of frequency. So uh, a, a sinusoidally varying voltage starts at zero, rises up to some maximum value, goes back to zero, and keeps going back and forth and back and forth over and over and over again over time, unlike a direct current source, which is just a constant voltage over time. So if an alternating current uh, voltage source looks like this, a V of t is a, a V naught sine omega t, these constants have some meaning to us. V naught is the amplitude of the voltage swing. It's the maximum or the minimum uh, that the voltage will take on. Capital T will be the period over which uh, this voltage makes one complete oscillation cycle. We've seen this in uh, mechanical oscillations, now we're going to see it here in voltage oscillations. Then we talk, introduce the term frequency, which is just one over the period, and it has units of uh, inverse seconds. It's, it's a measure of how many oscillations per second the voltage source is creating. So if it if the period is one second, the frequency would be one per second, or if the period was uh, a fifth of a second, that would be a frequency of five per second, or sometimes you use the term, uh, the unit of hertz for inverse seconds. So a frequency of five means that the voltage source is taking five swings per second. There's also something called the angular frequency omega. It's not a W, but an omega. Omega is 2 pi times the regular frequency. It's called angular frequency. It, it's a, a kind of frequency that's uh, used to have the units of radians per second. That's because when I multiply it by the time up here in the equation for what the voltage over time looks like, now the argument of the sine function, the thing I'm going to stick into sine, uh, has units of radians. Our goal will be to predict the current uh, that comes out of a voltage like this. So if the voltage is varying sinusoidally in time, so will the, the current. And our expectation is that the current may have a different amplitude or a different uh, timing of this uh, sinusoidally varying current relative to the voltage. But we want to try to make predictions about that. For sure, the voltage will be very, uh, the current will be uh, varying with the same frequency. It's just that it may be shifted relative to the, the voltage. So what goes into an AC circuit? Circuits have resistors, and so every time there's a resistor and a current flowing through it, of course there's a voltage drop through the resistor given by IR. Circuits also have capacitors, and that's where you have a, a wire coming along, hitting a, a plate and then a parallel plate, and the voltage drop is just Q over C. Circuits also have these things called inductors, and an inductor is just a coil of wire. And because there's a coil there create, and the, a current flowing through it, now there's a magnetic flux. If the magnetic flux is changing because the current's changing, then we know that that creates an electromotive force all of it by itself, and that actually tries to oppose what the, vo the voltage source that's driving the circuit is doing. That's interesting because it actually creates a voltage drop proportional to the change in current. So we write down a voltage drop with a constant of proportionality called L, the inductance of an inductor, uh, times that, that uh, current change. The input voltage source will have a functional form, like we said, of V of t is V naught sine omega t. And then the current uh, that we're trying to predict will have a form I of t equals I naught sine of omega t minus phi. I naught will be the amplitude of the current swing, and phi will be the phase delay. It's how much the current uh, graph will be shifted relative to the voltage graph. And our job will be to predict that. So if we're given the voltage as, voltage as a function of time, 
uh, we would like to say that there's some relationship to the current. In a DC circuit, that would just be V equals IR. But in AC circuits, because V and I are complicated, they're changing in time, there's no such thing as a single value of V and I. We can't write that expression. In fact, there's, there are two separate sinusoidal graphs, and our goal is to predict what's the shape of that sinusoidal graph. It's I naught, and it's omega, and it's phi. We've already said omega be the same, uh, but we want to know what I naught will be, and we want to know what this phi is, the phase delay relative to the voltage. It turns out there is an expression we can write down, and that's between the amplitudes. The amplitude of the voltage swing is related to the amplitude of the current swing, and it's related to another constant proportionality that's like resistance, but it's called impedance. So this is the generalization to AC circuits of resistance, and it goes by the letter Z. Our job will be to calculate I naught and phi given properties of the circuit, the impedance Z.